Okay, welcome to the second video on the theory of probability. Uh, in this video, we are going to prove Van der Mond's identity, which is a very important little identity uh, in probability. And we're going to give an intuitive proof of this result. We're not going to give a symbolic proof of it, because the symbolic proof of it isn't trivial, and uh, the intuitive proof is very, very trivial. Well, it's not, it, once you've seen it, it's very, very trivial, but and it's very, very understandable, and anyone can understand it, whereas the symbolic proof is a bit mm, dry, abstract, you know, it's it's far nicer when we have an intuitive proof of something rather than a symbolic proof of it. Um, okay, so, um, Van der Mond's identity then, ooh, is this pen working? Yes, it is. Van der Mond's identity. Van der Mond's identity. And this isn't just used in probability, it's, you know, it's an important result in, um, in combinatorics, and it's got applications in other areas of maths. Uh, Van der Mond's identity. So, uh, Van der Mond's identity is that m plus n choose k is equal to the sum from j is equal to 0 to k of m choose j, n choose k minus j. Okay, so this is the setup basically. Um, we have a set, a set of things we can split it up into m things and n things, and overall it makes m plus n, and we are asking how many ways are there of selecting k different things from here where order does not matter. Well, basically, wh whenever you choose k things, you're going to end up choosing a certain number from this uh, set, this set of n things, and a certain number from this set, n things. So let's say you choose j things from here, and therefore you have to choose k minus j from here. And will that j vary? And j can equal anything from 0 all the way up to k. So you could choose all k things from here, or you could choose no things from here, and obviously the um, the rest will be chosen from the other one. Uh, in this uh, formula, of course, we are assuming that m and n are both greater than or equal to k. If that if that doesn't hold, then this identity does not is not true. Um, okay, so basically, what you can then say is. For each of these cases, so say I choose j things from here and then k minus j from here, how many different ways are there of choosing j things from these n things and along with the um, uh, k minus j things from this n things? Uh, well, that's m choose j, so the number, of, the number of ways of choosing j objects from m objects is m choose j. And then you have to multiply by that by every single possible combination you could have here. Um, which is n choose k minus j. So that's the total number of ways uh, you can select k objects where you select j objects from here and k minus j objects from here. But of course you have to sum that over, you want the summation over all the possible j's. Um, so j is equal to 0 to k. So you want to say look when you've got 0 here, k here, work out all the possible combinations for that, which will be m choose 0 times n choose k, and then you want to add that to when you've take, chosen 1 from here, and k minus 1 from here, and so on, all the way up. And that's the proof of Van der Mond's identity. Um, so it's a very simple, intuitive proof of that, and proving that from algebraic standpoint is just painful. Um, so the actual practical application of this is, say you've got something like 7 choose 2, you could rewrite this as 3 plus 4 choose 2, and then you could apply Van der Mont's identity. So you could say this is j is equal to 0 to 2, uh, m will say is equal to 3 choose j, uh, and n will say is 4, uh, and k is equal to 2, so we'll want 2 minus j. So this great big sum here is equal to that. Uh, so sometimes it'll be useful to go in this direction to write this as thi well this as this, and some t uh, sometimes more often it'll be useful to take something that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like that. So that is Van der Mont's identity.